Good morning, and we wanted to just give you a quick idea of what's happening in the cross-stitch department. Um, as you can see, what's on the table and what's on the cart, we have gotten a lot of stuff in, and we wanted to let you know. So if there's anything you were waiting on or something you were wishing for, I think we just might have it. Anything from floss to beads to perforated paper to frames to cue snaps to kits, whatever your heart desires. So we're going to start off with um, some of our fabrics that we have in. Some of them, in fact, I think these are one, two are new and one is a restock. This is a Cashel Light Mocha. It's in a 28 count and it's a really nice, pretty, just um, neutral kind of fabric that would make those colors of your floss pop in what you're doing. And then I believe this is a restock. This is the 28 count Cashel Raw Natural. And it has more of a, well, for lack of a better word, a natural kind of rustic look to it. And this would be fun in some of those primitive projects that you might be working on. And then this luscious little light lime we have here. This is a 32 count and it's a Belfast light lime. And this is a fabric that is used in the Biddy Barnes pin cushions for the spring barn up here. Um, you don't need a lot, so, um, but we wanted to be sure that we had the fabric in for what you were going to be stitching. And um, there's probably some other patterns out there that this would look good as a background to also. So don't just, you know, if you're gonna do the Biddy Barns, go ahead and get the fabric for that, but don't limit yourself just to that. You might see something else goes, ooh, that light lime would look really pretty with that. So think outside your floss box. So we have that in Fat Quarters and Fat Eights both. And then we have this yummy, yummy white chocolate. And this is something I saw um, on one of the cross stitch pages on Facebook that somebody was doing a Santa who had a, a maroon coat on him and they were using the white chocolate and I said, we've got to have that. It's not a white, it's not an ivory, it's kind of in between the two of those. And we have it in a 32 count linen, a 28 count linen, a 14 count Ada and a 16 count Ada. So I think we covered all our bases on this new one. So, you know, grab a pattern and give one of these a try and bring, you know, bring your samples in so we can see what it looked like and what you were doing. Um, I can see a lot of pretty patterns being stitched out on that. So then we're going to kind of jump between a couple departments. I wanted to show you these dish towel kits. And in this kit, you will get a pattern to do. This one is for Hello Spring. You will get your dish towel. You'll get your rickrack trim and all your floss in it. And I think there's one for all of the seasons out there. And this has got a cute bunny, a fuzzy little chick who looks really funny right there on top of the O. Um, these are, you know, a quick stitch just for either somebody special or if you were wanting something for your kitchen or to hang a towel somewhere. So this would be fun. This is in our hand embroidery department. Also in our hand embroidery department, we've got some children's pillowcase kits. And um, this comes with the pillowcase with the stamp design on it. I do not believe it comes with the floss, but this one, the hedgehog, has been really popular. Um, I think we have a couple others out there. So again, looking for a quick gift, you know, what child would not love a hedgehog pillowcase? And then jumping over to our punch needle department, we got in a new book. It's called The Art of Punch Needle Embroidery. And it's got not your typical punch needle designs. Um, I'm kind of curious to really sit down and study this book for as 
how they get the um, the look that they are with their punch needle. I'm sure it's something very simple, but there's a lot of fun designs that, um, there was one in here I really liked, I wanted to show you. Um, these aren't your typical primitive designs, but look at this, look at the texture that they've used on these bigger loops on the tree. That makes that tree stand out to everything else in the picture. So stop in and grab this book if you're a punch needler or if you want to learn how to do punch needle, but they have some really cute, there's a sheep, Peter. Let me see. You'll like him. He's nice and fluffy. Oh, he is. It looks like there's a lot of projects in this there book. There are. There's probably, let's see, does it tell me? Um, 20 projects in here. So 1995, that's about a dollar a project, a little less. So this would be a good investment um, if you're looking for, I mean, I love this little mouse with the, the yarn hanging off of his tail. There, there's just some cute projects in here. Is he pulling a tooth? Is that what the yarn's for? Is that a tooth in his left, in his right hand? I hope not, but you know what? It looks like it might be. Yeah, there's your pattern. That sure looks like a tooth to me. I wonder whose tooth he pulled. <laughs> Is it the um, lion's tooth? I don't know, either the lion or the cat's. Huh. That's gonna be one angry cat. No kidding. Let me see if it even says here. Nope. Wow, the stories you could tell or make up. Okay, now on to cross stitch. Um, the latest out from Hands On Design, she started a new series, I believe it was last year, and it was a banner year, and this new release is called Language of Liberty, and it has the word liberty in three different languages. This is a banner. We do have a sample going up of the uh, winter one, which on her website, she gives you the directions on how to finish these banners to look like they do on her pattern. So that would be a fun stitch to do coming up on July. And then for those of us who are hoping for dry gardens that we can get our vegetables in, she has this new one that says, let us turn up the beet. So hopefully you catch the pun That's awesome. in the wording. So I'm not sure if she's going to have this as a series or if this is just a, a one-time thing, but, you know, get those, get that lettuce, the turnips and the beets and the peas all out in your gardens. And here from Needle Bling Designs, we have Frosty's Diner, which is the second of their series called the North Pole Shops. I believe the first one was Mrs. Claus's Bake Shop. So this is a follow-up to that one. We're on auto ship for these, so we were not going to miss one of them that comes in. So I thought those were fun. Um, if you're doing the Prim Stitch series from um, Lori Holt and It's So Emma, this is number 10 of 12. There's 12 of the de these designs. And this one's Love and Friendship. And these are quick stitches. You can either stitch them as a single ornament, as shown here, or you can do them all in one, I believe. Yes, you can do all 12 charts. There's um, a large bordered layout on the It's So Emma website that you could go and download. And so you could have your border to go around all of these. So that's a fun stitch. And then we kitted up uh, these kits from um, the Needlework Expo. This is Cheerful Giver, and you have two options. This one comes with 16 count Ada, and all the floss is included, as well as the fabric and the patterns. And then the one on my left is the 32 count linen, and it has your hand dyed floss in it. So we wanted to 
give you an opportunity to pop in and just grab a kit that's got everything but the needle and the hoop. So, um, look at that. Turn it so I can see the, all the goodies in there. And there's all your goodies. Oh, look at all those goodies. And there is a label on the front that tells you which one's 32 and which one's the 16. So, if you don't like 32, we don't want you mistakenly to get that one. So, now we have some more of our cross stitch patterns coming in. This one is from Drawn Thread, and this is called Emily's Hope. And it's got the word hope spelled out with robins in it. I'm sure there's a story behind this, but I'm not quite sure what it is. Her website's on the back, so if you're curious, you might want to check them out and see if she gives the backstory to this pattern. And then Little House Needleworks has a, um, this is a three-part series, Fall is in the Air. This is part three. And again, you have the option to do each of these separately, like is shown on the front, or to stitch all three parts together as one. I'm going to flip it over and show you that. This is the one where they stitch them all into one, which it just depends on what you want. If you want to hang it on the wall, then the three or the all together, or if you just wanted to use them as um, to sit around or bowl fillers or whatever, then you could do the single ones. This one is called Perennial Potions, and this one's Foxglove by Darling and Whimsy. And this is kind of a curious one. Um, I'm not sure if it's a series or not. And they finished it on a horn book by Fripperies MP. So if you're interested in this, you could also check out Fripperies and see about getting the, um, the horn book, which if there are more in this series, what you could do is instead of permanently mounting this one, you could just put some heavy duty double-sided tape or even Velcro on the back of this and the board so that when you get the next one done, you take this one off and pop the next one on. So it makes it a versatile um, accessory to your cross stitches. Okay, and then Peter got us in trouble <laughs> and kind of sent us down a rabbit hole that we almost didn't get out of. Um, these are Quaker Fantasies by Ori TM. And once he got us started looking at them, it's one of those things like a train wreck. You just can't look away. You have to keep going. This one is the Nutcracker. And it has the characters from the Nutcracker all in there with a Quaker design making them up. It's got a lot of fun colors in it. Let's see. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 15, 20. 25 colors of floss in here. It uses DMC floss, and it's on 28 count opalescent Lugana silver mist. So that's going to give you a, a little bit of sparkle in your fabric. Not much, but just, just a little bit. So um, when I show you the next one, there's a funny little story about it. What was the first one we started with, Peter? Oh, Mary, Mary Poppins. Poppins. We also have Mary Poppins in this, and that was a really cute one. They have Alice in Wonderland, all your fairy tales, and of course, my favorite, Oz. And this goes to the Wizard of Oz. This is um, also on 32 count opalescent Belfast silver mist. And I sat in staff meeting today while I was listening, and I identified each of the little motifs in there. And I think I got them all, except I was missing the scarecrow. So if you come in and you stitch this out and you find the scarecrow, stop in and let me know because he's really the only character that's missing. I think I found him. We've got the lion up here. Wait, let me zoom in. Okay. The lion's oh, here. Oh, that wasn't obvious to me until now. Really? <laughs> yeah. I believe this is the oil can for the Tin Man. Of course, here's Dorothy and Toto, the Munchkins, the Emerald City, the Rainbow, um, the Yellow Brick Road. I believe these are the Poppies. 
This signifies Glenda the Good Witch. There's the Wicked Witch. There's the apple trees that they end up throwing apples at them. Here's your flying monkeys. I like this one, the tornado with her house up here. Here's the professor's hot air balloon. I believe this is supposed to be the Wizard of Oz himself when they go into his area where you just see a smoke screen. I believe that's him. But I have not found the scarecrow. Where do you think he is, Peter? Well, could this be the scarecrow just chilling right here? And then could this be a scarecrow either landing or taking off, perhaps? Does a scarecrow fly? I don't know. The other thing I... I don't know. This, I mean, the yellow brick road, Dorothy's always on that, but it also leads through the poppy fields to the Emerald City. So I thought, well, maybe that's a scarecrow, and they, you know, when the flying monkeys attack him in the the haunted forest, and that's him all over the place. I, I don't know. So if you stitch this and find the scarecrow, please let me know. He's, that's on my list, along with Mary Poppins and the Nutcracker and, 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 and. Okay, if you've been in, um, you may have seen a couple new patterns by Flamingo Toes, and Peter's showing you a sample that will soon be going on the floor. This is Enjoy the Journey, and it uh, one of our gals here on the floor made this sample, and it probably took her, between working and her life, it took her about a week to finish, so it doesn't take a long time, but boy, is that a fun, and the colors aren't real bright, they're kind of soft, but yet they're pleasing. Um, we have another one coming up called Happy Camper, and that sample should be coming in pretty quick. So she's going to take it this weekend to get it framed, and we'll have it in the shop for you to see. But um, hopefully we have covered a, a wide range of interests. I mean, that's what we're always looking to do, and not to stick with all modern patterns or all, um, all patriotic patterns. I mean, we want to appeal to everybody. So if you happen to like a genre of patterns that you're not seeing in the shop, let us know and we'll see what we can find in getting those in for you. We're trying to um, check all the patterns to make sure we have all the colors of flosses and all the fabrics to do them on the called for fabrics. Um, we're just trying to meet your needs. So there's some exciting things coming up um, in the cross stitch department. There's a surprise for next month, but I'm not going to reveal it yet because it's not quite ready. So as we draw closer to that, um, we'll be sure to let the cat out of the bag. Peter, what's that over there on the table? Cross stitch. Who's cross stitch? <laughs> Something that somebody uh -huh. wanted me to stitch. <laughs> Is that a sample for the shop? Shop sample. Oh, yay. I'm always drafting when I find out there's a cross stitcher on staff. I'm always drafting somebody to stitch out something for us. So tell me about it. This is part of a series by Shakespeare's Peddler. This particular one's called Antique Bunnies and Baskets. There's the pattern. It's done on a 36 count vintage country mocha linen, which gives it a really nice background. Beautiful cloth. This is where I'm at. So I have a few bunnies, a few baskets. And Nancy, when I first started with my first motif, she said, of course you started with the bunny. <laughs> yeah, Peter's, <laughs> Peter's a bunny person. And this was part of a series that when I saw it, I thought, oh, that's really cool. It's a quick project. It's, um, as he showed you on the pattern, they finished them as small pillows. You can... Um, I forget how many there are in this series. Let's see if we can name them all. Okay, let's see. There's, oh, hold it up. There's, turned around. There's bunnies. There's the cups and spoons, the birds and bird cages, scissors, um, keys, the bunnies. So one, two, three, four. Maybe there's six in the series. So these would be fun to, I mean, of course, we just love the antique lace that they finished the bottom of the pillow with. 
So now we're on the search for antique lace to finish these with. So we have lace fever. Yeah. And I said, okay, when I start antiquing, that's something I'm going to start looking for. It's not something I had been, but my eye's going to be out for those. So, well, this is what we've got going. And um, always something new. Always moving things around and changing displays. So if you don't see something, be sure and ask, because we've probably just moved it somewhere. We have a lot, a lot, a lot of cross-stitch kits and patterns in our clearance department, and they are all 40% off, so be sure and stop in there. Um, when we have this much new stuff, we, we have to find room for it, so the older things that um, have kind of been hanging out, they need to go to live with somebody else, so they go to the clearance department, and maybe they'll appeal to somebody there, so... Take the time, grab a basket, have a seat, and look through it. Uh, there's all kinds of great stuff. Um, I want to show you one thing that is in the clearance department. That kind of made me sad, but it was okay. A couple years ago at Market, we um, stopped by, I believe it was Summer Stitches, and they had a series called Virtues. This was from 2020, and there's eight cards that are just a simple single pattern. Again, you can choose to do these individually or you can do them all on one, which is what I'm doing. And this has been in timeout for a while because there was an error in this first block, but I think I figured it out and then figured out how to fix it. So we're on to the next block and I'm getting ready to, to finish my border here. Just a quick tip that I had learned is if you have a piece that's got a border around it like this, don't close up your borders because in the event that you do have an error in here, you can fix it and your border's not going to go meep meep. So what do you mean don't close up the border? Like what? Do well, you mean? see like here, I the only border I did was like right there, just like an L shape. Okay. And then I did Serenity. So that was all within a border. So now that I have my design in the center done, <clears throat> I can go ahead <coughs> and finish my border that goes oh, around here. <clears throat> I follow. Which then I'll finish the border that goes across here. And I'm just doing my borders here as I finish a block. I'll come across just so far and then stop because then I know that I have my block to do underneath it. So once I finish this border, I'll finish this border across to about the end, do my center border in between, and then start my third design next to it. So I just do part of the border so I can have an idea of my area that I'm working in. And then I work up from there. So if you like this, it's all 40% off every single card. So I think they are... $5.99, so 40% off that, that's a steal. And can I just add, out of all the trees that I see <laughs> in a cross-stitch, especially samplers or any cross-stitch, they're all perfectly still, the wind's not yep. blowing, the sun's not shining, but these <clears throat> are windswept. Yes, I love they that, are. I love it, I love it. And Peter, you pointed out to me how they came up with the pattern for the house and for the trees, and I thought, well, that's kind of curious, because Peter's not that uh, familiar with Summer House, I didn't think. But if you look at the pattern, maybe you can see what Peter saw. If you notice their logo. Serenity is their logo. <laughs> with the windswept trees. Love that. So I didn't even catch it until he came up with that. So, but stop on in. Um, we just put out a ton of floss yesterday and the day before, and I see we've got some more in the box here. So we have floss, we have patterns, we have fabric, we have notions, we have beads, we have frames. We've got it all, and if we don't, let us know, and we'll try to find it. We also have needles. So if you haven't tried the Sullivan's Ballpoint needles, um, I will never use another needle except for those. They're a great needle, and they have a little ballpoint on the end. So 
instead of stabbing through the holes, it, it gently pushes the threads apart to take your needle through the hole. And it it's made a difference for me personally in how I cross stitch. So stop in. Um, we do have beginning cross stitch classes starting in June. Check out our website for those. And as a follow up to the beginning cross stitch, it goes through four levels. Um, after that, we will start finishing classes. So all those um, cross stitch projects you've got stuck in a box in a, a, a tub or just hidden out somewhere and you haven't finished them, we're going to give you some options on how to finish those. So I'm excited about those coming up. Check out the website for those. And again, stop in and see us. So we'll hope to see you soon. Bye.